All right, we're live. How is everybody tonight? Doing good. You? Pretty good, guys. Pretty good. want to give a couple of minutes uh, before we get started to, uh, to have some people jump in. Sometimes the notifications go out late. So uh, we want to uh, say... Did a stream yard. It was one of the first ones I've ever done in my own studio the other day. And for some reason, the notifications went out like five minutes late. I thought nobody cared about me. <laughs> yeah, dude. Yeah. It's like you're like waiting. You're like, oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, nobody loves me. And, and then, then five yeah. minutes later, they started popping in. I thought, oh, I'm good. I'm not a dick. <laughs> yep. Yeah. We don't What's have up? anything open on our end to see, like, I mean, I can open chats, but I don't have any YouTube open or anything, so I can't see the numbers and, you know, just let us know when people are in and, and how you want to go about it, buddy. Yeah, like I said, usually I give it like uh, two or three minutes and, uh, you know, and, and I do got some stuff I want to tell people that are coming in and um, and then also for the people that end up rewatching us. Um, but for those of you uh, that saw my audit the other day in Orangeburg administration building where the uh, gentleman couldn't get the body cam to work, I had uh, submitted a request for the body cam footage. It cost me $50 for redaction, and I got about a minute and 30 seconds of his hand in front of the body camera lens. That's all you could see. Oh. No, I'm just joking. That's just a joke. Because <laughs> <laughs> this guy, he was like playing with his body camera. It must have been five minutes. And I, I swear I probably cut some time out too because it was just so long. He was sitting there like trying to get his body camera to work. I felt bad for the guy, you know. <laughs> um, well, at least he was using it, like trying to use it. Right, right. Yeah. So, uh, you, you know, here in Indiana, they haven't adopted body cams yet. They're still working on it. Wow. I mean, you, you know, and that's only going to be so good if, if the uh, legislature makes it so that the citizens can get the body cams. Because, I mean, heck, Alabama's got body cams. They just won't release them. So, I mean, they do it almost absolutely no good for the citizens, you know. They're not covered under the Open Records Act. Well, Open Records Act's Indiana. What about? I mean, well, yeah, every every state's got their own Records Act, so every state can make their own laws, and and none of them have to give it to you. You know what I mean? That's it's just something that if the people of your state want, then they'll vote for, or you know, they'll legislate for. And you know, Florida's got one of the most um, expansive record acts we can you know just about anybody can request anything from florida and get it um but then again there's also um you know trouble when there's something that you want to get that exposes them then you run into issues and what most record is acts that i've seen is there's no enforcement of it you know it's not like if you don't give me the records you're going to be you know having a misdemeanor or a felony charge or something you know what i mean it's like yeah. they're, they're just not enforceable you have to end up suing these people for these records so i mean yeah. depending on what you want the records for you know they do that to keep people from fishing you know because yeah when people fish then they could get a handle on what's going on but otherwise you need to know specifically what record you want um or else it'll cost you a fortune fishing you know and so you got to have information up front of corruption and then be looking, you know, get pinpointed to the documents that you need and and stuff like that. So, um, yeah, crazy, craziness. Okay, I actually crazy. just read over uh, my states, you know, all like I really read through it for the first time. Uh, the Open Records Act is what it's called here. And I did find where there is state ICs, uh, Indiana Codes that regulate or ensure that we can get them but they're not written in a way where you could like say call somebody like the police hey they're breaking the law come over here it actually says way down in there you know that uh the way to go about it if they refuse it is to call a lawyer <laughs> yeah call a lawyer and and save a few thousand bucks and come sue us that's pretty much what the answer is 
there is codes though. So, I mean, a person could cite that code to the clerk or, you know, whoever's denying them the record and hopefully they'll at least care enough to think I'm breaking the law, you know, like this guy's showing me the law. It is one. Hopefully the, the people at least respond to that and get you your damn record. Cause you know, that's, that's under our constitutional rights. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, we've gone a couple of minutes. We've got some people in here. We're about 140 now. So uh, for those folks that are new to the story that haven't seen uh, for public safety, which is the gentleman here on the right of the screen, that's for public safety. And uh, to the left of him, we have Mr. David Lowe. Hey, everybody. Um, in the there flesh. You go. Yep, in the flesh. Um, and we're going to go over his story. Um, so before we begin, if, if for those of you that haven't seen it on for public uh, safety's channel, we're going to show just a little bit of this video here. Let me share the screen here. Hang on. I'll go ahead and mute. Yeah. Okay. Can you see it up on the screen now? David and you guys. Hold on. Let me see if I can see it. Okay. Everybody can see it. Let me know if you guys can hear it. Uh, give me a second and then just press one. If I can get this thing to play here. We're going to remove it there because some folks said the uh, audio was, was kind of bad. Um, and that be that might just be on my end there because I took part of the video that for public safety had uh, published and, and just clipped that little part out that I wanted to show uh, the audience here today. 
Um, and basically because to me, um, after watching that interview, that in, uh, interrogation, um, that was what it had boiled down to was that moment right there. Um, because he is a, a, a bigger guy, um, you know, and, and when you're looking, you know, when they put people in these positions where they're like, and once you see the whole video, if you guys watch the whole video, you'll you'll understand a lot more. But they, they were coming at David. They were telling him, hey, uh, you know, depending on what you say today and, you know, depends on if you're going to federal prison or state prison or if you're walking out of here today, you well, know, keep his job even they told him he could keep his job even. Right. Right. So when when he walked when he walked in, David, David, why don't you tell him when you walked in, what, what did you think was going to transpire in the room when you first got there that day i honestly didn't know i figured it was something over work okay so like maybe like a work-related issue you were late or or maybe they were dissatisfied with your work or maybe they even were happy with your work and maybe we're gonna talk to you about giving you a raise or something who knows right they didn't really make it clear right yes sir all right great so uh, you know, you go into this interview. Now, it looks like you got your uniform on. Were you just getting off or just going on your shift? I was just getting on shift. You were just getting on shift? Yes, sir. And the, and the incidents, the incident with the key that they're questioning about, that was supposed to have happened the night before. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Okay. Um, so, in the story uh, that we have here, folks, um, this young man was working, uh, doing his rounds. Um, and from what I understand from my listening to the story is that there was no officer on that floor in that pod, uh, in that officer pod watching the floor, right? There was just you distributing the medication, right? Yes, sir. And you had called a couple of times, Multiple uh, times. To, to supervisors that, hey, I need somebody to come up here. I got to disperse these meds, and I'm the only guy on the floor. Actually, uh, if y'all, I'm, I'm sure David wouldn't mind if I reiterate on that. What I'm reading, the way I've read into all the, the this whole story, like what, what actually transpired according to all the records, was David actually had uh, two different individuals in two different cells that reported emergencies. Uh, the one he was going in for, uh, was it the one you went in for for chest pains? Yes, that was in pot four. And another one was to check the guy's blood sugar that the other officer had basically forgotten to do and left on me. So I had to go down there and check his blood sugar because he was having a issue and he was diabetic. So the dude literally had two like emergency medical things going on at the same time, you know, like neglect from the other the other officer, where were they? I have no idea. Right. That's why, you know, listen, this sounds to me, and again, this isn't nothing but my opinion, but it's it, it, it looks, it smells, it sounds like either uh, a setup or, or a scapegoat type scenario. Um, you know, maybe it was Donovan himself uh, that orchestrated it and, uh, you know, used... Uh, David as a scapegoat, you know, who knows the possibilities are endless uh, as far as what could have happened. But I mean, when you watch the interrogation, you can see right off the bat that David doesn't know what's going on. They continually to, they, they continue to lead him in this interrogation. You know, they, they, they uh, like a, for public safety, it said he pointed out in the video, he showed in the instances where they pointed, you know, to the inmates and was like, and this is all like subliminal stuff too. Like, for example, there's a, an old thing that when you, uh, if, if you ever play rock, paper, scissors. So if you go up to somebody and you say, Hey, you want to play rock, paper, scissors, and you do this. And then, you know, they say yes. And then you, you know, one, two, three, chances are they're going to pull scissors because they just saw that motion. You know what I mean? Um, and it's subliminal and people don't even realize it. 
And uh, the, the same goes when, you know, pointing out suspects or, or doing this other stuff. Um, and it, it, it sticks. Um, and they're just interrogation tactics that they use. I mean, I mean, definitely one thing, uh, you know, David, I would have said was obviously, you know, never talk to these guys. You know, I, 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 know, I, learned, that. I learned that lesson the hard way. Yeah, I mean, I know they, you know, you know, when he came in there, he's like, oh, man, you know, I'm I'm the coolest guy you'll ever meet. And I'm not going to bullshit you. And, you know, I'm I'm like, J.C., I'm so sinless. You know what I mean? And and, you know, it's going to be cool and, and you're going to go home and you're going to, you know, have your job. And all I need is the truth. And and here's the truth. I'm going to tell you the truth and you're just going to admit to to my version of the truth. And that's what this interrogation's out, you know, about, you know, and, and that's basically what I saw there is that he comes in and, um, you know, he, he realizes this and uh, and he goes to work just like that. Um, and it, it just, you know, to me, it's just more affirmation that, you know, the state is not going to protect people, even if they work for the state. You know what I mean? Like. When it comes time for hard choices, you know, being part of the group and being part of the club isn't always going to save people because uh, sometimes somebody has to go down, you know. And in this instance, a uh, key had gotten out and, you know, supposedly there were uh, some girls that had been um, abused, sexually abused. Uh, and they're, you know, trying to tie it into this key and and trying to tie it into you. What what did you end up getting charged with altogether? What were the charges? I was charged with a level five felony, aiding an escape, level six felony, official misconduct, and a class A misdemeanor, trafficking with an inmate. Okay. And what were they saying you were trafficking? They didn't say it first, but they said it in the interrogation after a while that it was a key that they had apparently gotten off of a random support beam. Right, right. Did you hear that? Off of a random support beam. So one of the questions I'd like to ask David live, and I mean, I've asked him this, I'm not going to BS anybody, but but I'm shocked by the answer. That Was that key yours? No. Was it normal to be hanging on the column? No. What the so hell? just a yeah, just a key hanging on a column. And mind you, if the door had been open, I mean, there's nothing to stop anybody from getting that key or even going into the uh, the guard's uh, shack. I, you know, I call it the guard shack, but, you know, the, the, the place where the guard will monitor everybody and, and do all that stuff. Uh, now, I've, I've been inside jail and stuff like that, so I know a little bit about the layout of you know, jails and stuff like that. So to me that I find that crazy. I mean, um, just, you know, insane. Um, yes. Yeah, like for public safety was saying pod four is basically just like an open hallway where like the other pods in the jail actually had doors that were secure. And if somebody by chance did manage to escape, they couldn't get anything out of the office. Whereas pod four didn't have any door and the keys were just randomly hanging up on a support beam. Now, he, yeah. Uh, he's talking about the pod office, which is the officer's workstation, you know, and then right. on the other floors, there's a, an enclosed area where you can keep your stuff in the office. And if someone, even a trustee, you know, they got trustees wandering halls, you know, going and getting food and stuff like that all the time. So even a trustee could have just let me grab that while I'm going by. Cause there's no door on it on, on pod four, like on the fourth, on that top floor, you know, that now, blew my mind, man. Now it sounded like in the interrogation, uh, cause he said that when you came back from, uh, doing the, uh, the blood pressure stuff for the guy that had the chest pains, you had left the door open, the inmates had gotten out and gotten the key or whatever, the detective said that when you walk back to your station, um, that you look to the side and that you saw that the key wasn't there. Um, my question is, is are, are there cameras that would show that key? Yes. Is there any there way are. that you can request that footage? So can you request that footage from a, a day or two before and see who left that key? I just mentioned who put that, that key there. I mentioned that to my attorney and 
we haven't gotten any evidence yet. So far haven't got there yet. It yeah. He just he just asked me the other day, and I'm like, I'm no attorney, buddy, but I do know how to get open records. It, it's a process. And he told me, he's like, will you teach me? <laughs> will you teach me how to get open records? Because he, he wants what you're talking about. Yeah, I'll put it to everybody yeah. this it took him seven months just to release the interrogation footage to my attorney. Seven months. Yeah, yeah. They're listen. They're they're slow moving, and, and unless it's one of their coveted, uh, they're slow moving, um, and that you know that's just the way it is. Unfortunately, uh, again, unless you're one of the uh, one of the elites, and you know your your family's got five generations of judges, and you know you own the biggest factory in town type stuff. Uh, you know how it goes. Or so, if they're trying to protect you because you're the big shot. That's what they do. And, and I will tell you with my own personal experience with the exact same agency, which is how I ended up, you know, working with David on understanding the story. I wouldn't have ever known about it had he not reached out to me. And he didn't reach out to me just because I'm on YouTube. He reached out to me because it's the same agency that, that did the harm to my family. So he's like, man, the same guy, same agency and everything. Well, what I learned in my case against that agency was that they actually make efforts to keep you from getting any records on the case as long as they can when they know they got a lawsuit on their hands. Yeah, and, and mo most, yeah, most agencies are like that. I mean, that's nothing... Uh, I guess nefarious. I mean, that's just them trying to save their own butt, and and, and yeah, all the agencies will do that. Um, but the 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 level of corruption that's in this area that I've been hearing about, and and um, we've been talking about, um, and and you know, as exampled here in David's case, um, you know, they're going to keep doing what they want to do. And, um, and until we can get some federal investigators in there, um, you know, maybe some state level investigators, who knows how far uh, that money and influence go, you know, um, you know, you think it could be something easy, could, but you never know. I mean, one guy's daughter could be married to the governor's son. You don't you don't know how far that influence goes. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, um well, I mean, real quick, you know, in the, in our case with this agency, we got a pretty darn good idea of what it is, the corruption thing. It's, you know, do you want me to tell it or do you want to tell her? I mean, yeah, I mean, no, please give, give us, get everybody the details so we know um, exactly, you know, what it is. Because you guys are more well-versed on everything than I am. I, you know, I saw the videos and I talked with you a little bit, but you, you've got it down. Uh, more so than I do. Well, what's going on is these particular people inside of the agency that we're, that we're both the victim of, it's not just the whole agency. It's a group of people inside of this agency. And what they're doing is they're actors for reality TV shows. It started back with live PD and A&E came in and did, uh, you know, some stuff with them. And they kind of got a little famous there and started, you know, developing, more um, money, I guess, would be fluctuating because of the popularity, I, I reckon. But what was happening was, is that the sheriff for the agency that he worked for, and, and I'm a victim of him, he's a victim of, that agency picked up a contract to as a creator for the show 60 Days In. So that, that kind of blew up in the reality TV world. And that gained this group of people. Now we're talking about Donovan. We're talking about the sheriff. His name's Jamie Knoll. We're talking about a couple people that were pretty, you know, well known on those different series of shows that were all produced, you know, through that same group. And this has been going on for over for like 10 years, you know? So in that 10 years, these guys have depended on that popularity, that fluctuation of income and, and, like they're literally saying in on in public, like during elections and stuff, this sheriff is saying, I need what A&E is offering me. I need to continue doing these shows because if not, I don't have enough money. 
he's saying that to the people, to the public. So that way he gets the support for doing it, for doing the shows. And then the shows stick around and keep giving him contracts. You know, we're not sure where the money's going. I'm not going to allege all that yet. I mean, I don't I only like to work on facts that I can prove. But I will tell you, there's a lot of money and a lot of good resources that a game that these particular people that Donovan, Jamie, AJ Vissing, you know, a handful of these officers need that game for to continue to be on the level in which they're at. So that literally is it might not be the only reason, but it's certainly a reason for them to do it. And if they look bad, like really bad in public, if any one of those guys that I just mentioned were to get humiliated by the public, then they would lose that. They would lose that platform. They would lose that ability to be the group that's being seen in, in a good light. So why would they want to make a patsy out of someone why would they want no one to, to learn that they made a mistake? Why wouldn't they want anybody to know that their jail's not functioning properly? Because it would destroy it. The, the The television show would walk away. It would be like, oh, well, we were wrong. Oops. They're not good. Exactly. If, if you have a jail to where this young man has to go into the pod to do med uh, you know, distribution, and there's no other guard on that floor, uh, you know, to, to watch over. Um, I mean, this is a serious issue, right? A jail it's, issue. Right. And so they just uh, fob it off as saying, oh, well, uh, you know, it was this guy's fault. He had actually sold the key because that key was then used to, you know, sexually assault, you know, uh, women in the women's pod. Um, and, and, you know, they just go back and say, well, you know, this guy, we saw the video and this guy went into the pod and, you know, we could blame it on him and, um, you know, do it that way. Um, well, or, or maybe they just, you know, set it all up to, to happen that way. And, uh, you know, in order to, to make it seem like they were actually, uh, you know, doing something against corruption, like, oh, we found this guy. Because when you saw 60 Days In, I mean, it's clear these inmates are getting drugs in, they're getting cell phones in. I mean, and obviously these things are coming in from somewhere. Now, they did say they had, you know, busted that one guy by the Coke machine and the Pepsi machine bringing not stuff until, in. Not until 28 times that they have on record where people already got through. And look, Jamie Knoll, the sheriff who, who published that, published that publication that you're talking about mm -hmm. he said right before that in one of his interviews that there wasn't going to be nobody getting through his jail with drugs no more they even got a body cavity searching machine a screening machine so you can't get through with something stuck up your butt like how are these people getting 28 times on paper drugs in after that kind of of procedures are being practiced at the door you know what i'm saying it's it's amazingly dysfunctional to me to think that they have all of this equipment from the, doing the show and they're not even catching someone, you know, having 28 verified times in a row that they got drugs in and ultimately a person died inside of an overdose before they caught it. Yeah, it was the, it was the death that made him do the investigation in the first place, right? Yeah, how did they not catch it when there wasn't a death? Like, how were how were that many drugs getting in there when they got a dang on machine that checks up your butt? You know what I mean? Well, like, they said they, they said they were putting it in the trash can in the lobby, so it could have been it could have been a um, a trustee, trustee. Yep, that was going out there sweeping the lobby because I know in a lot of jails the trustees will handle like the bathrooms and the garbage and and the yeah. stuff like that in the lobby. So. Uh, I got a question for David. Uh, in the interrogation, uh, they were talking about chirps, which are the the tablet messages. Um, were you ever able to see any of those? No. Okay, I didn't think so. I I was when I was watching the interview. I said, I guarantee you, he's not going to show these chirps, and and I didn't see him show them. Uh, but he sure loved to talk about them. You know, he was looking through. Oh, I got all these chirps and. But I, I figured he would never show them to you. Well, look, he was holding them like like this, 
like so that you could see what was on the top. And I've read some some procedural, you know, policy stuff and laws on on doing an illegal a, a legal interrogation. And what I learned is, is if they utilize physically utilize anything that they consider to be manufactured evidence, like in other words, if those chirps on that paper weren't real, I think that a court would find that to be manufactured evidence because they're not supposed to use anything that they can hand you or you could see, right? I mean, I don't know about the C part, but they're not supposed to use anything physical in any kind of interrogation that has something on it that's supposed to be evidence unless it is really evidence. So when it comes to chirps, man, I would have to say this, you know, we'll talk about what chirps are in a minute for people that don't know, but I would have to say this, a chirp is nothing more than an allegation being made by a person because it is literally text message communication. That's what chirps are. So if it, if this is just an inmate talking to another person in public who's not sworn under oath, that thing right there is called hearsay. So in my personal opinion, if I held hearsay up and said this is evidence, the court wouldn't accept that as evidence. Yeah, yeah, I think, you, I think you're on to something there. Um, all right, so yeah, so... Um, yeah, this 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 story, this county has so many moving parts. Uh, you know, David is an unfortunate victim of part of that. Um, now, David, do you, do you have a lawyer for you? I do. Do you? Okay. And um, wh where are you in the uh, process right now? Are you uh, obviously you haven't been to trial and you haven't been sentenced or anything like that, right? Is it no? Just a past arraignment? Are you guys are in the discovery phase right now? Pretty much. Yeah, pretty much. We're still waiting for the discovery. Okay. All right. Yeah. There's definitely, definitely a lot you should uh, request for on that. Um, I mean, I, I would try to get anything associated with or around uh, Donovan. I would try to get any emails he had, any text messages he had around or before, like a couple days before. Um, Cause none of this smells right, man. None of it smells right. Um, I mean, there's only so much, you can't get personal phone calls, but you can definitely get, you know, text messages if, you know, it's about uh, public duties, you know, police duties. Um, we can request all those. Um, yeah, Cliff Williams asks, have they asked for the chirps? Have you got, I'm sure you guys have asked for the chirps, right? Um, well, like I said, it's only been a couple of days that David asked me what he needs to do about how to do public record, you know, how to even request them. And he hadn't had much communication. I mean, he's had communication with his lawyer, but not as much as he would have liked. You know, at this point, they're right. just not really starting to communicate ever since we started publishing all this. Um, and I think his lawyer's really, you know, like jumping on the ball here. So that's good. But no, there has not been many of his that don't have very many requests in. We've got a lot of the facts already, like really all that's necessary to tell the story. But like you're saying, Rogue, of course, you want more. You know what I mean? You need to see what those charts were about. You need to see what those text messages were on Donovan. Going yeah, back yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I would myself... Well, don't forget the spinet too, because he also had his just when that used his cell phone, and then of course you want video footage of that hallway. And we're yeah. a little nervous about talking about a lot of that stuff because you're talking about an agency that's known for covering their tracks. And here we are, yeah, I know they're watching, you know. And and the last thing we want is for them to go wipe the tapes off. You know what I mean? So where we are at though is. I'm going to help show him what I've learned of how to, to do public records and what you guys can look forward to on my channel soon. I'm going to go with him as his witness to the agencies and let him make his own record, you know, request his own records. I'm just going to do it just to be there for him. You know what I mean? But I will, you know, show you guys what's up as it happens. So that's the plan for this week, actually is to go try to get access to all that stuff that you're talking about. No, and then they'll probably try to kick us out of the courthouse, say we're not conducting business. We'll see, buddy. Never know with these guys. <laughs> it's happening. Yeah. 
<laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, there's definitely, um, it, like, like you said, you know, when, once you guys started publishing, then, then, you know, the lawyers started to pick up and, and now things, you know, are starting to move. Um, cause you know, it happens to so many people, this stuff does. And, and without publication, without getting that story out, um, you know, it could quietly be plea dealed away or, or, you know, something along those lines. So, um, you know, thanks to, to you for, uh, for public safety for getting involved, uh, and, and helping this gentleman out. Um, cause yeah, it's, it's a, it's, it's a tough, cruel world out there when the state has set its sights on incarcerating you for, you know, whatever. And again, we know innocent people go to jail all the time. Um, it's, it's not, you know, a rarity and, you know, they go to jail a lot of times for, you know, stupid, uh, victimless crimes, even, you know, like maybe selling marijuana to their cousin or, you know, who, who knows, you know? Well, I mean, that's one thing I know my attorney even told me because just got off the phone with him a couple of days ago. He actually wanted me to tell for public safety here to take the video down, but I told him, I feel like the public should know about it. And it's basically the right thing to do. And he basically agreed and said, well, you guys can do what you want to do. He's just said that he's afraid of retaliation on my part. And Oh, absolutely. I mean, yeah. I, I mean, hell, if, if you if you write a bad letter in, in the newspaper op ed column, you could be a victim of retaliation. I mean, my local sheriff in Orlando looked up a lady through the David system when she wrote a, a disparaging letter about the sheriff. And, and he, you know, it, it, so trust me, yeah, the retaliation is there. It's omnipresent. Uh, you know, it's it's like a spirit. It's all around you, <laughs> the retaliation, because, you know, they, they just don't like being found out. It's like the mafia, you know what I mean? It's just like you don't, or a fight club, you know, first rule, no, but don't tell nobody about fight club. You got, if you're recording fight club, if you're telling people about fight club, oh, there's going to be retaliation, you know? And that, that, that's the same way with, you know, the public's uh, servants, with uh, people that are involved in, in any kind of corruption. And and there's all kinds of corruption to be involved in. And you don't have to pinpoint it, you know, just like just like the cops don't have to uh, pinpoint what crime they suspect me of. I don't have to pinpoint the crime I suspect them of. I just got to suspect them of criminal activity. And, and trust me, that's easy enough with these guys. Especially you know? if you show it, you know what I mean? Like I can, we can prove it. And that's the only stuff we publish. Hey, can I say something real quick about the retaliation before that subject moves too far? Yeah. I'm going to be posting a video probably tonight. I haven't looked, I haven't watched it yet to make sure I, you know, I haven't redacted everything or whatever. So if I got time, I'm going to post it tonight. But right after I published his story, which I know ruffled feathers with people that, that are mad at me for, because it's the same people, right? Um, we received a visit from department of child services who's looking into me. And I'm just like, this is so obviously retaliatorial, you know, it's obvious because man, the reason they were there was not even, it doesn't even fit their welfare procedures. Like the reason that they came, it, it doesn't even hit the radar for the screening process. They said it was over a Facebook picture that I've done, like a post that I put on my social media where I'm hanging out with my little dude. You know what I'm saying? I'm hanging out with him. He's playing in Nintendo and in the background, my medicine is on my nightstand and my lady's medicine's on her nightstand. It's just her medicine, like heartburn for me. Like, and it ain't even prescription, just a, you know, Randatine from Dollar General. Man. And then uh, on her nightstand was a, a Claritin allergy medicine. It might not be Claritin, but it was definitely allergy medicine. And I mean, that's on our, in our bedroom, you know, in the adult's bedroom in a child proof container on our night side bedside table. You know what I mean? And it's way back in the corner of the picture. So I took a picture at an angle where he's hanging out with me. I took yep. a picture at an angle where he came into my room. I'm in the picture. So I'm obviously there with him. You know what I'm saying? And I take this picture and way teeny tiny back in the corner. You can see the medicine bottle sitting back there. It'd be like looking at this screen right now and seeing what's on this nightstand behind me. Somebody went through the trouble 
of zooming that picture way in, looking for any excuse to do something. So yeah. I'm just saying I'm right now dealing with a whole nother legal thing because I'm not playing with DCS. Those guys should have known better when someone that is a an activist for constitutional law is posting a picture of them. And then you think you're going to come to that constitutional activist who's been studying law for years now. You think you're going to come to their doorstep and violate their rights over something that does not even fit the, the procedures to welfare, child welfare? Guys, I am busy. I am definitely handling that. Um, I've been doing the grievances. I've been sending letters to the governor. I've got, I'm, I'm naming people, you know. So the video I'm getting ready to publish, uh, hopefully tonight, is going to be the the first step of you guys seeing that incident. Like, well, it's a new one. You know what I mean? It's like right after I publish his story. I'm not saying for sure that I, I'm proving or anything. I'm not acting like I'm proving that it was retaliatory. I'm saying I believe it to be retaliatory, but it is an incident. I, I mean, yeah, what I mean, seriously, what else could it be? Like, literally, where did you post that picture? Where did you post that picture? Uh, on my, it was actually on my, you know how you can connect your media platforms? Uh-huh. Okay, well, it was originally a TikTok, and it was a still picture. And you know how to have, like, the, the effects where you can do, like, the rotation and, and music playing yeah. behind it? That's all it was. So I started on my TikTok. It was a picture of me sitting next to my, my step kiddo. You know what I mean? Like, he's playing a little little Nintendo thing. And I'm, you know, we're it's in the morning. We just got up and got going for the day. I was watching YouTube. He come over to my bedroom door. He's like, hey, can I come hang out with you? Of course you can. So I took a picture and I posted it in caption. I said, this is what we're fighting for because we haven't had, we've been, me and, me and the official Miss Connor have been working our asses off to get uh, the custody back of him, right? Right. Uh, because of what was done in our, in our case. So here we were in that position. And so I'm chilled out. I'm hanging out with him and I hadn't seen him hardly at all, you know, and there he is. So I put in the captions, this is what we've been fighting for, you know. And that's it. That's all it was. So it was a TikTok, and then automatically, I think it might go over to my Instagram or Facebook. But they came to the door saying that it was my Facebook post. So whoever did the false malicious report, which I'm pressing for, guys, I'm definitely going to catch whoever did it, up in the law that is against Indiana law to make malicious reports. Guys, follow me. Guarantee you. I will have a judge make sure that that charge is pressed. If not, well, I'm going to keep on bugging them. You know, that's what I do. I'm persistent. That's me. But anyway, that's where it was, bro. It was just on my Facebook. Somebody called them. They show up to the door, and they were trying to get official misconduct to answer all the questions. And I was like, it's my post. She was at work. He was with me. Talk to me. Talk to me. Don't tell me you can't talk to me until she comes out. Talk to me. You know, and I got it all recorded, guys. You know me. I don't miss a moment with nobody in that position, you know, in those positions. So I'm going to publish it. You, you guys will see. And they said very, very clearly this part. When they came to the door, they said, it is regarding a post on Facebook where there were medicine behind you. And I was like, <laughs> Talk about my heartburn medicine or her allergy medicine. Like you came to the door because someone has medicine in their house. Yeah. Like, yeah. No, this is, this is what I'm saying. Listen, listen, when, when we as people look at situations and it, when it's, it's hard for people sometimes to uh, digest whether it's true or false, what helps people out and understanding the truth is a repeated pattern of behavior. You know what I mean? And in this instance, in this county, um, I, it's just back to back to back to back to back stuff. I mean, that's it seems that's how these people live. You know what I mean? And 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 for the folks that are watching now uh, for public safety has a lot of stuff going on. I've been able to, to see into some of that. He's, he's given me sight into some of that talk to me about some of that it is insane it, it's insane what what could be uncovered what this young man could uncover could literally be the the corruption story of the year 
uh, for the, the the county here. So the uh, only thing I'll dispute about that, dude, is I wish I was a young man. <laughs> yeah, right. Don't, yeah, don't we all? I think I, I think I say it because I wish it upon myself. If I say it enough, it'll come true. But, um, <laughs> but thanks, so man. I appreciate that. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, I mean, um, just I- I- insane what's uh, going on here in David's case. What's going on in your case? Uh, the retaliation again that you faced. Um, well, I mean, I have a lawsuit already filed against them because they busted in my door, broke official misconduct spine, beat the crap out of me while I was in handcuffs, and then ended up not even having a real warrant. You know, now that happened to us a couple of years ago, which was a little bit before what happened to him, and we didn't even speak until recently. You know, but it's just a matter of corruption going on within that agency. And you know what? We're not even in the same county. So this is a county agency that's stepping outside of their jurisdiction to do these things to people all around here. He He's in Indiana, uh, Vet Tech Kimmy. He's in southern Indiana, right there on the uh, border, um, Clark County, Indiana. And you guys heard that right. A couple of years ago, he was involved. They, they raided his house. They broke his uh, girlfriend's back. Uh, broke her spine, had him in handcuffs, was beating him with a gun. And, and guess who, who was doing this, folks? It was that guy that was interrogating David, okay, the same guy that was knocking the radio down and, and standing up and saying, "I all I want's the truth. Come on, that guy doesn't want nothing close to the truth, man. He wants something nice and easy, uh, somebody to pin something on. Yep. You know, he wants fame and fortune. Yep. That's what that guy wants. Yeah, he's he never shuts up about being on 60 Days In. Like all, if you all look, go to his Facebook, you can see he does nothing but receive, you know, like, hey, good job on 60 Days In, or talk about it. You know, it's he even did it during his interrogation. He goes, I don't know if you knew it or not, but I was actually in jail on this little program I did. He can't shut up. It's been years. You know what I mean? And that's all people around here know him for. You know, nobody cares about him being a cop and if he's doing it right or not. They just think he's cool because he was on a reality and he flunked on his show. He did a terrible job as far as the premise of the show. Yeah. Yeah. That's... I was always looking for the next um, type of content to that, that could be released with him on the spotlight. He's always going around here looking for something he can do while he's on camera or get talked about and be known for it so it'll go on reality tv for him that's donovan Herod, guys that's who he is the real deal yep donovan Herod. all right oh, so now one more thing i want to say about it he is literally this is his job title the narcotics captain that's what he does narcotics that's it all right undercover narcotics he is the captain of the entire narcotics division i want to make this very clear guys Supposedly, the raid they did on me on paper had nothing to do with narcotics. I have nothing to do with narcotics. She has nothing to do with narcotics. The fact that we keep dealing with all these narcotics divisions and narcotics complaints, that is so crazy to us. We don't even drink official misconduct tonight. We had nothing to do with narcotics. We've been accused of narcotics a lot, especially since the raid. But it was a narcotics division. That's why Donovan did it. That's why he was the one who beat the shit out of me and broke her back because Donovan was here. Donovan wouldn't have been here if it wasn't a narcotics raid. But on the warrant, the warrant that turned out to not even be real had nothing to do with narcotics whatsoever. It was supposedly they were trying to say I stole my uncle's motorcycle when he died. And my uncle gave me that in his will in an estate that was named to me that I didn't keep. That's what they said they were here for, though, was a motorcycle parked in the driveway. You know what I'm saying? Why would you bust somebody's door in for a motorcycle outside? All you had to do is knock and say, what's up, Chris? What's up with that bike, man? Can I ask you a few questions? I would have been like, dude, take it until you figure out your answers. That's what I would have done. Right. Did right. You know- you know, after my interrogation, he got promoted to chief of detectives, right? Yeah, they moved him up to chief of detectives. Every time he gets away with doing something really egregious to anybody around here, 
they move him up another notch. Dude's making like 100K a year. And for Indiana, that's more than 40% more than what his position is supposed to be making. And that was before he did the bump up, uh, position bump after what he did to David. Oh, man, there's just, there's, you know, there's so much going on. Like I said, there's so many moving parts to this whole story um, and, and just so much out there that needs to be reined in. Um, I, I know you have other stories uh, coming up for public safety. I know you're going to keep us apprised of David's situation. Uh, David, thank you uh, again for agreeing to be on our show tonight. Um, and, and again, you know, I'm sorry this, this happened to you. Um, you know, it, 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 it does every person good to be vigilant against uh, uh, our governments. You know, no matter what country you live in, uh, no matter what your job or position, you know, and, and unless you are, you know, running the government, which are the elite people throughout, you know, history, um, then it, it, it does us wise to stay vigilant against them because at any time, anybody could become the scapegoat or could be put in a position uh, to take the fall for somebody else's fraud or blunders or, you know, whatever, you know? So, um, and, and I think we all know, I, I, you know, a lot of my subscribers already know and that, you know, in that situation, you know, mum's the word, you know, because even though, and, and I know it's, it's so compelling to us to want to be able to be like, no, dude, I didn't do anything. I'm innocent. You know what I mean? Like, dude, you're crazy, you know? So it's just natural for us to want to, to deflect, uh, you know, when we haven't done anything wrong, we want to show them, Hey, we haven't done anything wrong. I was across town, you know, and, and, you know, even that little bit could put you across town somewhere where a murder occurred, you know, where they were looking to put you. Or they can yeah. say that that was an aspect of the case that they you didn't know about. They figured out later. That's you know, a, yep. yep they get <laughs> oh, we forgot you. to mention whoever did the murder also drove by that area. You said, you know, even though that wasn't part of their case before, they'll just throw that in there. Right. <laughs> yeah, I got, I got GPS tracking. Yeah. So. <laughs> Suddenly, it appeared in their case. You know, after your admission. You know. Exactly. But you know what, no, bro, It's hard for us as the victims, and that's why you know. It, it, I want to say it here on your panel. I want to. I want to express to David how brave I think he's being by by allowing, because I've been there before, guys. I know what it feels like to have everyone looking at you like you did something bad, and you know in the inside, and you know that you have the proof that you were not guilty of the thing you've been accused of. But man, every time you try to tell people, they still turn on you. The trolls that you all know about here in this environment. It's like the world are trolls when it happens to you. So every time you try to say, man, listen, it was this, they'll turn on you and say, oh, no, but it was probably because you did that. And you were innocent all along. Like you didn't, you didn't plan to be in the position to explain yourself tomorrow. So it's not like you know what to say to the naysayers. It's not like you know how to handle, you know, presenting them the evidence quickly and efficiently so they quit arguing and calling you bad names. You know, you don't know how to do none of that. All you know is you got this stack of crap that they gave you and you don't know how to read it all unless you studied learning all this stuff. And you don't know how to show this to, qu to people quickly, you know. So what it takes is people that do understand this stuff and supporting you through it. And that's what I've offered David. I was like, man, look, I know how to understand this stuff a little bit. I'm getting better at it. I'm not the most intelligent guy in the world. I have some friends that are better at it than me. I have no community where people are involved in learning that kind of stuff. So I just said, come on over, buddy. And here he is. There he is. Today, David has had this stupid ass thin blue line license plate on the front of his car since the first time I met him and I saw it and I was like, Oh God, not that, you know, <laughs> like here I am trying to like be cool with this dude. He pulls up the four cop pulls up with the thin blue line on the front of the car. I was like, Oh God. 
So I was like, you know what that thing means, like in reality, right? And we talked about it. Um, and then he told me last time I seen his car, it was still there. I was like, we still got that on there for you. Believe in that? He goes, no, I don't have a, the right tip for the screwdriver to get it off. I was like, I got one. I handed it to him today and I videotaped him. Just get that thing off and throw it in the garbage. <laughs> That's funny. He chose it. <laughs> yeah, you know. yeah, listen, I mean, we, 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 we understand. Everybody understands that. You know, the police fill a necessary role yeah. in some aspects. So, you, you know, at least not here on my channel do I find that all officers are bad. I, I actually get a lot of good information from a lot of good officers that want to clean up their departments and their areas. Yes. And, the, and the same thing for public servants. I get emails from people that work in these buildings all the time. So, you know, some of them are subscribers of mine and they say, Oh man, you know, you came by my work the other day. I wasn't there, but you know, I saw you on the surveillance tape, you know, or whatever. So, um, so. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's just like with my situation. Like I will publicly say that there's a lot of outstanding corrections officers that are down there at Clark County and that I would still take a bullet for. He's got some of them that are, that are contacting me and, and thanking me for, you know, for walking him through it. Cause they're, they're sure that he was turned into a patsy on it. And these are guys still working there, you know, well, they worked there, I should say, and, and gals, you know, and the thing is he's got more support than he ever knew about. I just think that people were afraid to say anything about it unless there was more, people that also agreed with them. Cause I mean, you know, nobody wants to be the blunt of retaliate. Nobody does, you know? So anyway, and when I said that about the thin blue line guys, if you all research what I'm about, you'll see that I'm very particular about my perception to that symbolism. It's not about cops. It's about that symbolism. I am not a fan of that symbolism. I have, there's a lot of people that back me up on that. And there's obviously everybody knows that is a code like a world argument right now, whether or not what that symbolism means, but there are more factors involved in the history of that symbolism, recent history of that symbolism, meaning what it is that I see it for. And I don't know how it would hurt anybody, anybody it's just like to it. not use it. Like it doesn't hurt anybody. It, you can still say, man, we need cops. Yes. I support cops. I'm going to be there for every cop who ever needed it. You could do that still and not have that on your car. You know what I mean? So like, I'm just one of them people. I don't like seeing that because why use it if it is offensive to anyone? There's no reason to run around trying to offend people when you don't have to and still stand for the same thing well, you stand for. Yeah, it's like well, it, 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 you do, though, because, I mean, you, you want the people divided. I mean, the people coming together and standing against the government is never their that's never their priority. You know what I mean? So of course not. <laughs> any any little bit that they can can manipulate to get us to go at one another instead of them is a bone that they're going to throw this old dog. Yes, you sir, know? buddy. And and another thing, if you look at that particular symbol, I go on all night about this that blue line flag. It's literally a division symbol of our country. It's it's just like the division symbol. Like one half is one, the line in the middle, then two. Okay, that's what that's saying right down the middle of our country. You're either this or you're that. That's a division sign. Literally, like if you read the history of, of it, not the origination of it, because it didn't originate looking like it does now. It was formed recently after BLM protests. Anyway, I, like I said, I can talk about that thing. But it is created in response to stop protesting to, to speak against protesting and then have a side choosing that the opposite of protest is police. I don't agree with that. I don't agree with that police are supposed to be the opposition of our First Amendment. I believe that they're supposed to be the protectors of our First Amendment. And that's what I expect, guys. I expect to hold our government in the position to do the job that they signed up for and did this and promised to do. That's who I am. Well, my friend, I think you're uh, asking a bit much. <laughs> <laughs> I'm realizing that, brother. It's a yeah. big old fight. <laughs> yeah, I think you're. I think you're. You're shooting too high, son. You're shooting <laughs> to the moon. 
shoot for the stars and accept one step. I'm I'm just happy with uh, garbage removal and and running water. Really, at this point, <laughs> you, you know. You do know my pipes are backed up at the house today. Something happened to clog my pipe this morning, so I'm literally like right now Drano's in there. <laughs> so you would say running water, wouldn't you? <laughs> yep. Oh yeah. yeah. I didn't even think about that. Go back out. That's funny, but yeah, I mean. Um, it, it, you know, it's the, the, the flavor of the day is corruption. That, that's that's what Baskin Robbins is selling every day is corruption, you know. And that oh, I, that, you. I believe that's one reason why they wanted to get rid of me down there at Clark is because it's like I was saying before, how it took a bullet for the CEOs. I would do the same for the inmates. It's in, you know, it's about what's right. That's what it's about. It's about what's right. I would stand up for the inmates equally as I would stand up for the officers. If the officer was in the wrong, I would report it as well. What right. you and, guys and, 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 that, and that just puts, really, that puts a target on your back. It does. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, and, and again, you know. What, what do you guys watch the, the footage, the whole thing, you know, the, the part one and part two? What you will see is, I'm going to tell you something you guys are going to see when you watch it. Literally, the first, one of the first little line of questionings Donovan was doing to David here is he was saying, I heard that you were quitting, uh, you know, through the grapevine. And David's like, I don't want to. And he's, and Donovan says, so what's the problem, man? What's your problem with it? Why would you want to leave? And he said, honestly, it's not the inmates. It's kind of more the people, you know, the work environment. He's like the jail staff. It, we just, you know, the way the jail's being ran, it's not being taken seriously enough. And he mm -hmm. said, I worry about, you know, like, you know what I mean? That's what he said. You know right. what I'm saying? So, so go back and watch and, and keep your the big time leadership. I will publicly say it that say this. They're a joke. He's talking about a guy a named Jamie Knoll, Sheriff Jamie Knoll, author of 60 Days In, is a fucking joke. Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to cuss on your stick. I'm sorry, buddy. No, you're fine. You're fine. He's a joke. He's he's so dishonorable. Jamie just and I mean, you know, he's been hammered over the questions with this publicized. Because after the show, like if you know what the show's about, that that show, it's literally the premise is find issues that are going on wrong inside the jail. Well, I don't think that Mr. Null expected it to be a lot about like finding issues with the staff, with the way the jail's being ran, things like that. I think when he created the show, he thought it was going to be focusing on things inmates do wrong all the time. But that ain't how it really turned out because the public was also interested in problems with the facility maintenance. And in that, he runs from question after question after question, and he gets caught up in all kinds of stuff. You know, like the dude just can't get the jail to run right to save his life, man. And he's making a ton of money, 350% more than what any other sheriff in the nation is supposed to be making take away part of their pay, give it to some of the officers pay and some of the nurses pay. That way they can get a night shift nurse in there. Oh, do you hear that? Yep. Jamie could make, I don't know, 50% less and they could have a night shift EMT. Hey, let me ask you a question. Are you trained to do emergency medical? No. Yeah, anything at all? No. You know anything about medicine? No. What about blood pressure? No. What about, what? you know what a heart attack looks like? There could be different signs of a heart a heart attack, but no. No more than anybody else. So I was asking about the chest pain thing. He's like, it might have been a heart attack, man. I wasn't going to wait around. Uh, and he, he called and waited for, like, help, and nobody answered. How long was it before? I'd say 30 to 45 minutes. Then what would you end up going in there alone for? Because the inmate was having chest pains and trouble breathing, and I was concerned for his safety. I would have gone in, guys, and I'm, you know, only because, and I know everybody probably say they would have, but for real, dude, if I was a CO and it was normal, if the sheriff had been telling people all along to go in normally by yourself, and there's a dude in there under my watch going, I'm having chest pains, I'm going to prop the door and go in because I prop the door everything I do. When I serve food, I prop the door. When I do the medicine handout, I prop the door. That's what the sheriff been telling me to do in the year that I've been working there. So that's why the door was propped, you all. Yeah, I mean, the higher-ups and stuff told us that always have a means of escape if something goes south. Even if you had to lock yourself inside an inmate's cell, you lock yourself inside that cell. 
And that's the whole reason, like I was stating, I wasn't leaving myself trapped in there with 32 other inmates and everybody who been hollering. And basically, I didn't know what everybody was doing. So it was kind of like disarray from what I understood. And I read his probable cause and I didn't publish all of it because, you know, it was a lot of like private information in the probable cause paper. Right. So, so I tried to like redact everything first and it was just too much to redact. So I just zoomed way in on certain things, but I actually have the whole probable cause and everyone that spoke every, all the inmates that were interviewed, they said the same thing. He said, they were like, man, we had it kind of wild in there. You know, old boy was having some chest pains and you know, that kind of stuff. Like they're, they're like, we tricked him to get out and get the key. And they were honest about that part. Like the, the inmate said, we, we got out on him. And, no problem saying And that. one thing I would like to point out for the viewers, if you're wondering why I said lock yourself in a cell, pod four is basically an open dorm where there's just bunk beds. There is no cells in there. It's basically like a, where you, you can pretty much walk anywhere. There is no cells that I could pr pretty much lock myself in. Oh, yeah. So it's like the summer camp type deal where it's one big room and you got a whole bunch of bunk beds and. Yes. Like there was no way for him to even tell everybody individually, guys, go shut yourselves in your rooms. There aren't what no rooms. Well, not even shut yourself in the rooms because on that sixty days in, I saw the jail didn't they didn't have no doors on their room as it looked like. So some of them do. It depends yeah, but, on the pod you're at. Yeah, but even to tell them, hey, just go to your room. You know what I mean? Sit on well, your bunk. It was until after sixty days in. After sixty days in, that's when they added the additional pod four where the incident occurred, where I was at, and they didn't have that back then in 60 days. And why? Okay, so if you're going to update the jail, they did that because the sewer line broke and destroyed the whole building. They had to put inmates out in the yard and stuff for a couple of weeks. Uh, but anyway, they lost a ton of money too, guys. Um, if you're going to add on to the jail and make a new section, why wouldn't that be the most updated section of security? That should be the most secure one that you have in the whole building. It's new, and you've learned your lessons in the past. That should be the most modern, high tech one you built. I mean, that makes sense to me. I would have a pod office with the door, I would have the good security monitors in there. I'd do the pods that they could have their cells where the COs don't have to worry about what the guys are doing as long as they buzz in and say, Guys, go get in your cell and shut the door. I'm coming in. You know, that could have been done. But this new section of the jail doesn't have any of those capabilities. The only thing they had was a really good camera. And and then there's the other thing, Ro. There's a on floor one, there's a monitoring room. It's literally the monitoring room for the whole facility. There's always two staff members designated to do nothing more than watch every bit of movement on the monitor when they see something going on. So like when you got a CO in one of those rooms by themselves, somebody should be watching that monitor that whole time. And that's called main control. What's it called? Main control. Main control room. And there's always two officers in there. And we know they were in there, guys, because you would think that he needed a key to go in that room. You would think because we're talking about this whole key system. It's not. A, it's a keyless system to that door. So they have to buzz you in from the main control room. So he actually called down. They answered and said, all right, we're going to let you in. And then he goes in. Wait Where a minute. Hold on. Hold on. I didn't. I didn't. Hold on. Hold hold, 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 the, hold the presses. This is something I didn't know. So what you're telling me is that you got two guys in mission control. They see you on the monitor. You called up there. You said, hey, I need to get into to pod four here. Well, what, what what the basically how main control like how main control is you have a silver box and the silver box there's a button along with the speaker you hit that silver button main control will get over that speaker ask who it is you tell them that you know your officer such and such don't going in i had also done that and radioed downstairs and let them know that i was actually going in 4b to do a medical check and i needed somebody up there but nobody came a medical check, guys. That's what he called down and said. They said, why are you going in? He says, I'm Officer Day Low. I need to go into this pod. Why are you going in? Medical check, and I need some help. Nobody came. 
And then it took him like 30 or 40. If I'm understanding him right, and I mean, sitting right here, I'm sure you tell me if I'm wrong. It could be give or take, give or take, but. Like 30 minutes. Because I had to go down there to pod three, take that guy's blood sugar. And then the machine wasn't working, was having issues with the blood pressure machine, go figure. And when I get back up there, it actually starts working again. You know, when I got back up there, it started working. So that's when I went in and nobody was still there, hollered one more time. Yeah, this no, this sounds this sounds way set up, bro. Because what you're telling me is that, I mean, unless these guys are total morons that were working in main control, because somebody calls me up, says, "Hey, I'm off for such and such. I need to get in the pod B. I got you know a medical thing, whatever. Okay, and I'm in charge of buzzing you in. I'm looking at the camera to see who that is. You know what I mean? Because it could be anybody saying there's anybody. Yeah. I got, I got to get, they have I gotta, I gotta get a visual on it. I will for okay. fact say that downstairs, like like in booking where the supervisors are, there's also cameras down there. And main control has, I would say, give or take, when I was there, eight or nine cameras. I'll tell you all what. Here's what Big I'll do. Big screens like with, you know. I've got a picture. I, I've gotten some open records recently. I've got a picture of the room. I'm going to post that for you all. I'll post it on my community page. I'm going to post the room he's talking about, man. It's badass, guys. It has got, it is like a studio. There's these beautiful monitors, all of them. They got all this from 60 Days In. Uh, that was one of the things they bragged about when they got done with their, their four year contract. 60 Days In left all the camera equipment for them, like as a gift. But man, I got a picture of that stuff, guys. It is immaculate. Like if you noticed his footage from his interrogation, pristine like really good cameras all that stuff was left behind so anyway yeah man the monitor room they got all the ability in the world to sit in that room and watch every single thing listen the reason they were bragging about the camera system inside the pods and talking about co's doing med pass which med pass is not watching the same floor guys it's a different job so david was doing med pass and then one of the interviews they were talking about where Jamie was talking about how happy he is to have the new camera system they left him. He said the cameras are so good that when they're doing med pass, when the officer hands the guy the pill and he goes and puts it in his mouth, he can see if they cheeked it or not. He can see if they swallowed it from those monitors, the ones he's talking about that were being watched for him while he got buzzed into that room you could li you could literally zoom in on those cameras and actually tell what they're reading if they're reading a book you could read their books <laughs> you can see if they're missing a tooth if they got something stuck on the back of their tongue like it's crazy good stuff so where would the monitor people and why ain't nobody else being charged you know like they're they're destroying him with charges yeah, none, of, none of the inmates of those allegations that came up and the inmates that got out of the section None of them were charged with anything. No charges on them. And listen. Now, 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 hold on. Let me, let me, hold on. Let's go even deeper here because I'm, I'm starting to realize some stuff as, as, as we do more talking. They, okay. So you went to work, you know, Wednesday, whatever it was, they got the key. The very next day they're interrogating you about this key. <laughs> so either <laughs> those, uh, from what I've seen on the story, there was like 14 women that, were sexually assaulted. Are they saying all 14 of those women were sexually assaulted in one night? Uh, hold on. For legal purposes, um, that's a lawsuit that was filed. Right. That is the allegation that the women are making on that. I'm not saying it did or didn't happen. I'm saying. Well, right. No, what I'm, what I'm saying is, was it supposed to have happened that one night? Because, I mean, obviously, uh, when he came into that interrogation, he knew who the inmates were that had, you know, that made the deal for the key, and he had talked to them, and and they had told him, and you know that's what I mean. What Herod so, was that's what Herod was saying. Herod was saying he knew who right. they were, that it was a key, that that he'd made a deal, that yes. Right. So, so what I'm getting at is is it could have only happened that night, right? Because otherwise, no, I mean, obviously they would have tossed the cells. They would have found the key. They would have body scanned everybody. You know what I mean? Like, obviously, it had already, it had already happened. Um, according to the lawsuit, I'll share that with you, Rogue. Uh, okay. I'll share you the, I'll share with you the lawsuit. I'll let you look it up. It's online. It says very specifically that he is responsible, that the, those particular inmates that were named got the key 
and they use the key to cross from their cell pod. Okay, so the cell pod has got a wall in it, and there's a door. And that door, the jail is allowing men on one side, women on the other side. The key goes to that. The, according to the lawsuit, the key goes to that door. So what happened is they're saying, the women are saying in their allegations, is that they got the key from out in the hallway, then got locked into the cell with it, then opened the door in between and went in there and committed 14 sexual assaults. That's the lawsuit side. As far as the um, the all the other stuff goes, like everyone that was involved, like as far as David's part of it, all of those people were very clear saying, we snuck in and got the key and he didn't know about it. You know what I mean? And so, then, so who are these guys that got charged? Because obviously if there's a lawsuit. Nobody. Say, Nobody else is charged with nothing, and they're not charging him with that. They're charging him. Well, you heard his charges. Right. They're charging him with making it. They're saying he made a deal for a key that was hanging on a column out there, and he's, he did a head nod, is all I heard saying. He did a head nod, and that was the cue, unplanned, unprovoked, un, no knowledge of it. But I can just do this, and that means go down the hall and fetch the key and come back. That's what Herod's accusing him of. So his charges are for aiding and abetting an escape, even though they just ran out return. And then the other charge was aiding and abetting escape, official misconduct and trafficking. Within misconduct and then trafficking. So they're saying in his allegations and they had, they never mentioned in his interrogation, not once that there was anything from rapes going on. Not one thing was mentioned about that. I didn't know about it even after I saw his interrogation which guys that's exclusive stuff. He ain't been to court. That's not open record. So don't, you know, don't, don't try to copy it and stuff. But anyway, there's nothing mentioned about it. Well, Herod's talking about how he did all these interviews and it was like four hours after he clocked in before he was like pulled into the interrogation room. And during that four hours must've been where the probable cause affidavit, the questioning was done with the inmates. And in that questioning, they're saying, yes, we snuck out on dumbass and we got us a key and we had a radio too, but we we decided it was a bad idea because they'd probably notice the radio. So again, while he was busy and had his back turned, we hurried up and went and put the radio back. And then we came back in here and then dummy never even knew about it. And he stated he was there for six six hours in on his day off. That don't matter, buddy. Yeah, Herod was complaining about how many hours he had to work to do that investigation. And that he didn't even look at the footage, you know, which we got to sort of guess, play a guessing game about what he's telling the truth about and what he's lying about. And that's in all aspects of Donovan Herod. He's a fucking liar anyway, much less being able to be a liar, you know, legally in an interrogation room. Right, right. Yeah, you don't know what, what he's being truthful about, which is, again, like you said, probably not a lot. But that's some pretty crazy factors right there to think Dude, that. Yeah, I mean, to me, to, again, now, now, now we're bringing it all out. And to me, I mean, dude, that just sounds like a, a setup. Like somebody needed a scapegoat, or somebody wanted to get David out of the jail, maybe because he, he, you know, is a good, you know, hearted person. Seems like he wants to do the right thing, you know. Yeah, and he's quitting he might, and, and potentially whistleblowing, you know what I mean? He's saying yep. the jail ain't operating right. I don't like the way things are being ran around here, you know. I mean, I, re you know, I regret that all that stuff happened that night, but the For fact sure. of the matter is if the sheriff and everybody else actually did their job and actually cared about everybody in the jail, that would have never happened. Uh, yeah, right. right, of course, because there would have been an officer on the pod floor with you the yeah. guys watching the monitor would have been like, oh, gee, what are these guys running out of the pod and grabbing? Let's go and search the whole cell. And who the hell's leaving the key hanging on the wall? And that's, one reason right. why I was and that's one reason why I was stating in the beginning to Herod that it was all the other officers because I was tired of people not, you know, taking their job seriously, et cetera, et cetera. And they didn't like that. And I got tired of the way management, you know, upper management was run, running things. It was, it was a joke. He told me that, you know, I was at, cause of course I got a lot of questions about how that whole, you know, everything under Jamie Knoll. Cause that's what I'm doing is digging in on Jamie Knoll. So I, I had a lot of questions for him and he was like, he goes, you know, Chris, 
there's a lot of people in there that are trying to do it right. You know, it goes, but man, it's just the way everything is being ran. Even it doesn't matter how good you try to be. You just can't be a superhero in there. There's no way you could accomplish all the things that need to be done as a singular person to make it work better. You know, like everyone would have to do it and not everybody's doing it. So like he wasn't even on pod four. That wasn't his job. His job was medication, which he's not trained to do. But that was what they were using their COs on night shift for. Because we didn't have a night shift nurse. They don't have a night shift EMT. So they were using their COs. Yeah, because they can pocket that money. Just, right? like, just like when they built a new pod, I don't even need to build individual cells because that's that's more concrete block I'm going to use. So I don't even do have I to just... put a door on the secure station for the CO. Well, they, that's one of the things that all the officers were actually complaining about was that we needed a night shift nurse because nobody really liked and, you know, didn't want the responsibility of handing out medication. Yeah, you, you, get, you probably get in trouble for that. Well, it's not just the handing out medication uh, because, yeah, again, you could hand out the wrong medication. Somebody could die and you could be sued or could be criminally charged even, you know. Uh, yep. They could say the same thing in this instance. Oh, well, you know, we've got a chirp from an inmate selling, you know, telling us that you were selling a moxicodone, you know what I mean? And, <laughs> and look, there he is reaching over your hand, you know, like this guy did in this last interview. Um, you nodded. Therefore, yeah. you're guilty. Yeah, yeah you, you, yeah. So, um, yeah, I mean, you know, and then plus again, what if there's a medical emergency? You know, there is your ticket. But and, there and, was. I well, mean, right, well, right, but then that's what I'm saying. Listen, this is a jail. This isn't a prison, right? So yeah. in jail, there's gonna be uh, some people that are awaiting trial and awaiting, you know, sentencing or awaiting whatever, but there's going to be some people that might be found guilty as crazy as it is. Sometimes the government does arrest people that, that aren't guilty of anything. And, and, and people on my channel know this and they, they see me get arrested for stuff and that's, you know, not against the law and whatever. But so this does happen. Yeah. So in that institution, no matter what you think of criminals or crime in general, we have to understand that, that some of these people maybe didn't commit a crime. So they should have access to health care. You know, if hell, I, you know, I'm in heart attack country, you know, in my age and, and stuff like that. So if I was in jail, I would definitely want someone there that could give me, you know, CPR at night because your yeah. ass was too cheap and didn't want to, you know, pay for a night nurse, even though you guys are all making, like you said, all those officers that are in that stuff are making like, you said 20, 30, 40% over what they should be making. I'm um, on 350% more. That's how right. much. Mm -hmm. Right. So you're, you know, you're saving money doing that. And uh, here I am dying of a heart attack because David don't know how to do CPR. Yeah. And then, but David's the only option you got guys. Oh, and by the way, the person who's here to make sure that they can call David, he's not here. Nobody's on floor for, there ain't nobody here. So I'm out there, help, help. I'm going to think I'm having a heart attack. There ain't nobody answering. You just got lucky because David just happened to be due, going by for medicine duty. Where's the people? Where was the guy for that floor, dude? I have no idea. And that's one thing that I would like to find out. Yeah, absolutely. You need to, you need to definitely have the records of who was working that floor and the video footage. Because, I mean, if you said, like you said, 30 minutes, was that on the same floor? You said you had to go somewhere else and do uh, blood sugar. Was that on the, the same blood floor? Sugar, the blood sugar was in pod three. Basically, pod three is an all-male section, and then pod four is where the blood pressure was at, and that's the, both the male and female pod. It's two different floors. So, okay. But his job was to distribute for those sections of floors, right? Yeah, I, distribute I, medicine. I had to do pod four, three, and booking that night. So three floors. So, okay. yeah, I know I was confused as hell when he explained it to me because you don't know the difference between pods, cells, you know, booking versus pod four. You got to learn all that stuff. I, I drew the layout on my video to help people understand it and pod office and all that. Yeah, when, so, yeah. When you get what he's saying, it makes perfect sense. So he got called by the guy who was on three, right? Mm -hmm. 
he got called by the guy who was working on three, pot three. And he said, I got a dude in here that's got diabetes that's been having some troubles with the sugar levels. Man, I'm busy. Do you mind coming down here and checking him out for me? To David. So David said, okay, I'll do that. So he goes and was trying to do that. Well, he couldn't get nobody to answer the radio call. He called the radio, called him and said, I'm going to go have to go in for a med. Anybody come up here? Well, nobody came up here. Well, in the meantime, he hears old boy hollering chest pains on the next floor. So he goes up there and he finds this blood pressure machine. He's like, oh gosh, you know, I got to get in here. So he's got this blood pressure machine. He, he goes in because nobody answered. You know what I'm saying? He, he called several times. Nobody answered. Well, he does get buzzed in. And let me get in here with this blood pressure machine. Dude's in there having chest pains. He goes in there to do the chest pain stuff. The damn blood pressure machine didn't work. It didn't work. So he's like, the inmates are trying to help him plug it in and, you know, do whatever they can do. Like he had a guy that had a, an inmate who had some medical training who was trying to help him understand the machine, maybe to figure out how to get it to work. It wouldn't work. So he had to go back out, lock himself out again, take this cart and try to go get a different cart. All the while, dude's up there saying chest pains. And you got another guy who's been waiting on his on his blood sugar stuff for however long. You know, no help, man. They finally got the machine working. He tried it one more time and it was like he started working. They were right like cool. The so he so he brought it back in, propped the door, so he wouldn't get stuck in there with them, and took the blood pressure reading. But that's when it must have happened. Yeah, and keep in mind like with the pod that I was in, I know you probably some of y'all seen the interrogation footage and you probably heard Donovan say that I picked it up one. Well, there is a total of three outlets inside the pod. There isn't one on the exterior. I tried the one at first that was closest to the door, and that was actually not a working outlet. That is why I moved it inside further to the pod to try the one underneath the TV. No shit. I didn't know that. I'm sorry I keep cussing, Rob. I didn't mean to do that. Um, You're fine, buddy. Whoa, so that's why he went further in the pot. I just now learned that, y'all. I didn't know that outlet close to the door didn't work. Well, yeah, as we get deeper in it, you, you know, you start remembering more stuff. You start seeing more stuff. But, yeah, I dude, know. yeah I, I, you know, I would – I'm not a betting man, but if I had to bet, I, I would say they were, you know, maybe trying to get David out of there. Uh, yeah. Well, and that's no. just one thing you all you all understand, I'm sure, is any time that I tried to explain and Donovan what happened, he was sitting there, no, 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 tell me the truth. He said, that's the not truth. the truth. I'm going to tell you the truth. He was always interrupting me. And then he said, what the truth is, this is the truth. The truth is, you did it. You knew it. You did this. You did that. He said, now, do you hear me? Because that's the truth. Now, tell me what I said the truth was. <laughs> yeah, know? right. That's when right. you do the whole thing. You know that uh, part that you clipped where, Don, where Donovan yep. jumps up and smacks the radio and hits him with it and everything? Yeah. Stands up and cusses and says, I'll put the rest you, I'll stand up. You know, that was an hour and, and I think 22 minutes in. So, like, he's been being, bare, you know, stuck in his room, hammering down, saying, I'm telling you the truth. You better tell you what I'm saying. That had been going on for over an hour straight on this man. And I had been literally working two weeks straight, only two hours of sleep that day. And everybody here knows that working two weeks straight, 12 to 16 hour days will whoop anybody's butt. Yeah. And I just want to, real quick, there was a comment in here uh, posted on the thing. And I just want to make a comment on it because, again, I, I have some experience in jail. So, what a lot of times what will happen with outlets in jail is they'll do what's called pop in the socket mm -hmm. in order oh. to light their cigarette. So they'll, they'll end up popping a socket to get a spark to light their cigarette off of. That makes or, sense. Or a wicks. Yep. Hmm. I didn't even know about that. I just heard him say that that outlet didn't work and it rang a bell for me because in the interrogation, when you watch it, I had to watch it a bunch guys to make that video. You know what I mean? So I learned so much by watching it over and over. Now, I highly recommend it to people. Like, if you got more questions, there's more answers and questions. The more times you watch, it's weird. You'll you'll catch something every time you watch it. But one of the parts of that that was real severe was Donovan was saying to him, he's like, 
you went further into the pod. You went further. Agree with me. You went further, didn't you? Well, not just now realized he had to go further if the plug didn't work. Yep. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, this is definitely something I want to help keep an eye on, and, and I'll be looking forward to updates from you guys. Um, we're an hour and a half into it, so we're going to cut it off now. But um, I wanted to thank both of you guys for being able to come on today. Um, I've been interested in the story. I, I, w- I was telling, you know, Chris, I've been interested in the story, so I wanted to to definitely do whatever I can to get it out there and let people know because – This is just crazy. I mean, you know, this, again, this is something that happens, you know, to a lot of people and and not everybody gets a chance to say their story. But I mean, as much as I can, I want to put every story out there that I can that, you know, to show and maybe just help even one person, you know, or hopefully more than one person. But but, uh, what you're doing right now with this area, getting involved. And I mean, it's the reason I created my channel. It's the reason official misconduct created her channel. It's the reason we stand up and the way I met him and, and the reason he came out to us, it's all because the people that are watching your channel and you right now, what you guys don't realize is you are helping so many people just by being here, just by being a part of it and saying, well, that's interesting enough to pay attention to. That has been huge around here, guys. Keep it up, and thank you, thank you, thank you guys so thank much. You guys. Absolutely. I would, I would like to leave something. Also, if you all have any questions, you all can comment on for public safety's channel, and I will try to answer them the best about, best I can. That thing, that same thing goes to you, Rogue. Yeah, he's been staying active on all my publications involving Clark County, which when you guys, if you haven't already been familiarized with my channel, you'll learn – pretty quick and hopefully I can organize it better so you'll understand it better. But the majority of my content is pretty much on Clark County, even though I don't even live in Clark County, but the majority of my content is of Clark County and even, even most of it, even more particularly on the the people we're talking about, the specific people, you know how people say there's only a few bad apples usually ruining the whole bunch. For sure. (laughs) Here, for sure. So most of my stuff is on that group, right? But I do have other stuff. I do try to extend. But this group is so much going on that honestly, like me and official misconduct times 20 can't really keep up with publishing all the things we learn. You know what I mean? So pretty much most everything on my channel is on them. I mean, there's some other stuff, but most of it's on this group we're talking about, you know? Well, you know, we got to hit them. You know, where, where, where the corruption's at. We don't have a choice on uh, on who's fooling who, you know what I mean? We just got to sniff them out and, and bring it to people's attention. And sometimes we're lucky and, you know, it's not, you know, right next door to our house. So... You know, we get a little bit of leeway from the retaliation, but, you know, a lot of times it is. It's it's right down the road from us, you know, and it is what it is. And, you know, until we move or, or, you know, or root out the the cause of the injustice, you know, we're pretty much kind of stuck after that. You know, like I told you the other day on the phone, I knew I did a story on that gentleman. He was being retaliated against for 27 years. Yeah. by the city. I mean, they had literally right. kicked him out of every city council meeting he went to. He was trespassed, couldn't go. He was arrested like 23 times. He was assaulted like 11 times by the police, like broken arms, ribs, you know, nose a couple of times. And he's got all this documented. The guy was great with yeah. his documentation. He had everything documented and he's got a multi-million dollar suit now against the city. But I mean, Jesus, for 27 years, you've gone through this retaliation. You haven't been able to to go to the council meetings and have your voice heard, you know. And he literally had the chief of police threaten his life on live radio. <laughs> you know like, what? I wish that surprised me because it should. And it, and it kind of does. But, I mean, the whole reason I even became a channel is because we were victimized first. 
and then I created the channel. So, I mean, literally, like, what I'm doing is just sharing with you guys that, the retaliation. And, so, and it's never-ending. I mean, they don't quit. I mean, just the other day, they're sending DCS to my door. You know what I mean? Like, you not they're giving us never-ending content over here, guys, because I understand what that dude's going through. His is probably – it might be worse, might not be, but I can see that easy considering what I've been through. And you all can watch my channel and see it in real time. Video this week means something happened last week. Video this week means that happened last week. So this guy that's got 28 over that span of years, if I wrote every one of them down and actually had them documented, I'm, I would be able to come up with that kind of amount of, of problems only if I use just the ones I have the documentation for. There, I bet that dude had a whole bunch of other stuff happen too, even more than what you're talking about, which is already outrageous. Oh, I'm sure. I'm sure. Absolutely. Yep. A absolutely. But listen, I got to get out of here. I got to let everybody go. Thank you so much for doing this. And yes, you know. you know, thank you for allowing me because this is this is you two guys. This is your story, and uh, you know, and and I heard it, and and like I said, I it, it, you know, stuff like this needs to be heard. You know what I mean? It's yeah. no different than a classic poem or a, a classic, you know, musical composure or artwork or something. Some stuff need to be heard. They need to be seen. They need to be addressed. And instances like this, not just David, but your story, David's story, all these stories from that location yeah. um, just collide to make, you know, a whole universe of what the fucks, you know? Yeah, there's a big old tangle, web tangle. And guys, I'm getting calls from other people too. So, you know, just, it, I'm probably going to organize my channel in a way where y'all can just like hit the playlist of nothing but Clark. So that way I can keep doing it. And people know this is all Clark. I'm working on learning the YouTube structure, but, but, but yeah, guys, there's already more. Like I've got a, a couple people waiting right now that have asked me to, to, talk to them and sort of publish their situations as victims to the same people. So it's still, I mean, it's pouring in. It's, it's sad really, but it's just pouring in. I don't even know why they're coming to me, man, other than I must be the only one that's, that's gotten lucky enough to create an outlet. Yeah. Well, you're, you're in the area, you know, um, you've shown that you will do what's right. Yeah. And, and, and so David, now you've, got a target on your back sir and that's why cps showed up at your house i got them for, for the damn medicine bottle you know what i, I mean got i've learned it now y'all you know what i mean all they're doing is making it where i can show you when every time they mess with me all they're doing is making it where i can show you like it used to be when they mess with me and i didn't know what to do they mess with me and it hurt me but now yeah, I mean, it still hurts me, but I'm also just like, watch this, y'all. Look, I told you. <laughs> you know, I didn't have the ability to do that before I got here, you know, to YouTube and for public safety. So now that I've achieved at least having for public safety and she has official misconduct, we know and they know that as soon as they hit us with any stupid thing, cameras are on. Come on at us. We dare you. Because all I'm going to do is show everybody this. That's what we do. Yep. Yep. All right, guys. Thanks again. Um, and, you know, like I said, we'll definitely be keeping an eye on that stuff. I'll be sharing your stuff, uh, you know, through my community tab, stuff like that. But um, I do believe that this might be the last live stream I do here on Rogue Nation. I think I'm going to do all my live streams and updates on my 360 audit channel and just keep the rogue nation one just for the audits because um i've been trying to clean it up for a while i i started the 360 camera uh channel to get my 360 camera footage over there um so that way when people come to rogue nation it's just it's just the audits pass or fail you know i put uh both of them up at times so um you know we can keep it a little more focused like that and then do the live streams over on the other channel as well so i think that's going to be a direction i'll be heading in i got a lot of uh, educational information i'll be doing and putting up over there as well so um 
So we'll probably I love when you do those, Ro, the stuff when you start talking about lawsuits and stuff like that. It might, you know, a lot of people might not jump in on that stuff, but I tell you what, they should because oh my god, you know, there's so much to learn on that on the stuff that a lot of people think is the sleepy time stuff. That's the most entertaining if you learn anything about it. Like yep. it's crazy what all you know it's a guy like this right here can show you. Wait a minute, there, like that. Um <laughs> And make sure that you guys have both channels saved. I'm sure you do, but make sure you do and hit that notification for it. Cause I don't want, I don't know about you, but I don't want to miss any of rogue stuff. <laughs> Amen to that. Yeah, man. Thank you. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right, guys. Thanks Good again day. for coming out. And, um, you know, we'll talk with you guys again soon. Um, I do have more content that'll be coming up from my uh, South Carolina trip. So be on the lookout for that. And um, I got some other stuff to go over too. That'll be pretty interesting. But um, guys, if you want to know more about the story here that we went over tonight, the links are in, in the description. Um, so you can go and check out the story at, at length whenever, you know, whenever you like, maybe, you know, sitting in bed before you go to sleep or something, you want to watch the story because the videos are long. They're like an hour long, one's an hour and a half long, you know, stuff like that. So it take you a little bit of time, but I definitely recommend the story of this young man, David Lowe right here. And, um, and yeah, this is something everybody should be, should be looking about, you know, this should be something that should be on everybody's, uh, you know, tip of the tongue because, you know, this, Again, it's it's one thing for the for the government to to go against the citizen. You kind of expect that, but here you have the government going after the government itself again. You know what I mean? David is a correctional officer, and yeah. and it just it just shows you that they they don't care. They yeah. do not care. You know, one day you work for the government and you think you're living high on the hog, and the next thing you know, bam, there's the government saying, you know what? We need a scapegoat. We need you know, depend this on somebody, you, you know, you, you look like the guy who might turn some of us in. So you got to go. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like that, that too that's, nice, man. Sorry. You're the patsy now. You're too yeah, nice. Dude, that's totally believable, dude. That's, <laughs> you he know, that's is nice. You know what I'm saying? Right. Like, well, that's what I'm saying. That dude, that's <laughs> totally believable that, you know, they want to get people out that yeah. they think might, be if they nice. see something, well, it's, it has nothing to do with nice. It has to do with the fact that that he does what's right. You know what I mean? Whether nice yeah. or David's mean, is, you know, it could be either way on certain days. You know, he could be wake up grumpy. I don't know. But the fact of the matter is, is they feel, because I got a feeling from David that he would do what's right rather than trying to hide it and push it under the rug. It would eat at his conscience. Um, it would eat at himself until he, he had something to say about it. Um, and, and that, that, that kind of thing, like I said, can, can get you killed, you know, depending on, on what it is you see, you know, as what I far mean? as the people that he worked with, it could get them in trouble, you know? Right. Well, that's what I'm saying, dude. If I'm a guard, okay. And I, I'm, I got anger issues and I've been known to rough up some inmates and I got David over here and I'm thinking to myself, man, if I kick some inmate in the head one day and I kill him, is this guy going to rat me out? This, 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 yeah. this is the kind of guy here that, that might tell on me because he has a conscience. You know what I mean? He's got morals. Yeah. He, he's got respect, you know, for himself and for people, even though they're inmates. Again, this is a jail. This is not prison. You know what I mean? A lot of these guys still have yet to be tried and sentenced. So they, they well, you know, the majority is just holding. They only have one section that's, you know, got, got, the other ones in it, but that's a holding for the the other area. Technically, oh look, guys, I'm going to say this real quick. If you all, I, I want anybody and everybody to watch his story as many times as you can. And I know it's long. I know it's drawn out. He knows it's long for sure. But man, I'm telling you, you can't get enough of learning off what's going on there. And, and every time you watch, you'll see something new. And look, I, you don't have to, but if you get interested in learning what's going on with those people. It really will take you watching the other videos on my channel too, because there are those people, you know what I'm saying? So, and I'm not trying to promote myself here more than I'm promoting, but it's not what that, you know, I'm saying. No, this, 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 this is something that needs promoted. I mean, 
uh, regardless of who's doing the videos, my man, this is something that needs promoted. It just so happens that you and, and Miss Official Misconduct are the ones that are living there and having to go through this stuff. But, but um, I mean, trust me, this this situation needs promoted. This is, again, some of the worst stuff that, that I've ever heard in an area. You know what I mean? Like, and and, could, I, could I say something real quick? Yeah. I will tell the viewers that if you are actually wanting to share it, I do not disclose. I do not disclose the sharing of the video. The sharing of the video on YouTube. He's channel. saying you can't share. You can share mine. You can put the share button on mine. But he's he's been told by his lawyer not to let anyone cut the video. Like like he he only had the right ability. right. Yeah, no one's yeah, no one's allowed to mirror the video. Right, and, I, and guys, I don't mean to be a, a, a butthole about it, but I will definitely copyright strike people and share it with the owner that it's happening because we can't let that. You know, if his lawyer said don't be doing that, we can't be letting that happen. But I'm not saying don't share the story or tell people it's there. Please, by all means, do that. Yeah, but no, you, you you share use the share button. Um, yeah, or you know, call me, get a hold of me, uh, zero four public safety at gmail.com. I'll run it past David. If you're a big channel and you're seeing this and you want to do something on it, we can talk to his lawyer and, and maybe make that happen. But what you don't do is just like cut it, like, especially you trolls out there, guys. We will make sure that you're charged because this man's trial depends on him following what he needs to do for his lawyer. So what we're saying is don't be cutting bits and pieces out of it and try to make your own thing out of it. That's illegal. I will copy right strike you. We will find it. We will chase it down. It won't just be a YouTube thing. His lawyer going to get you for it. So don't do that. But please do share that it exists. Please do contact us if you want to legitimately share in your own fashion. That's all invited. It just has to be done through special permission. So thank you. I think Tenth Man had um, a misconception about striking you if he plays parts of his public video, and that's not it either, Tenth. You know, pe people are going to do that. That's that's fair use as long as it's up. That's gonna that's gonna happen. What what he's saying is is he doesn't. It's not going to allow people to download it and and run it. You know, exclusive. Um, by itself all together like that you know what i mean like obviously you've seen parts of the video here on my channel uh that i used from his like that and you know obviously anybody could go on youtube and look at it so that that's not the issue the issue well, is Rome got permission having... to do that cut and you know and yeah it's not like i'm saying you know what i'm saying guys is there's a reason you don't see people's footage before they go to court. This is really rare that you're seeing this footage before his court day. It's super brave of him to come out and tell everybody what's going on, A, and B, that stuff is evidence for his court case that hadn't been done yet. And his lawyer is telling him very clearly, be very careful with who you show this evidence, how you give the rights to this evidence out there to be shared. So that's all we're saying, guys. No offense. You know, I hope anybody didn't think I was being, you know, a butthole or anything. I'm just looking out for the guy and, and following what I've been told by his lawyer, you know. Right, right. And that's all. Yeah, it's always good to follow their advice. And, and you know, lawyers can be wrong, too, sometimes. And, and yeah. you know, we can get into all that later. It's another, neither here nor there. But Tenth Man says that he would love to speak with these guys. Email me a link, he says. And um, uh, Tenth Man, this young man is for public safety. That's his channel. And what was your um, email uh, um, address? Here, I'm going to throw it in private because I can't see how to, to throw it up there. And then if you oh, won't mind, just, just, go just Yeah, just tell me and I'll post it in the chat here. Zero four. Zero four. Public safety. At gmail.com. And then you could also get me through official misconducts. I um, think the one. I think the one will be good. Okay. Because he's yep. he's he's right there in the chat. So he, cool. He'll, I look he'll, forward he'll, to hearing from anybody that wants to help to out. Three, so. Subscribe to all three of them. <laughs> Absolutely. He's a fan. 
Oh, we're cut. We're we're cutting out the the panel. So I'm sorry, tenth. We've already been on here longer than we should, my man. Um, but yeah. All right, guys. Again, thank you, and um, yeah, we'll see everybody around. Thanks again, guys. Thank you, guys. Thank you all. Appreciate it. Love everybody.